Hey, I'm Lauren from Giorgio Draws and today we're going to be taking it back to basics with some simple but impactful watercolour greenery. So today I wanted to focus on some simple watercolour greenery. This is something that I've been asked about quite a lot now, um, is just how do you go about painting basic greenery? Uh, so I'm going to take it right back to basics and we're going to go through four simple um, styles of watercolour leaves that I use all the time and um, they, they will take you right up to filling out beautiful botanical pieces, they're great on their own, they're just like perfect fillers, I use them all the time. Okay. So today I'm using my Winsor & Newton Cotman palette and as you can see it's well loved and I'm almost out of the sap green. This is because I use it so often. Um, I've actually bought a tube to refill my pan with. So I'm just going to top that up now in case I need any. There we go. Palette set. I've pre-mixed a few colours here just to get me going. So you could do this in any a variation that you want, it doesn't have to be the same as me. But what I've done here is I've mixed three colours just to give us some variation while we're painting. So the first is like a kind of eucalyptus blue, a greeny blue. Really, really pale wash. And this has been mixed using the sap green and then lots of water and a little bit of blue as well. Second variation is a much darker green and it's a little bit more vibrant too. This has been mixed with some sap green, some viridian and also a little bit of black. And then the third green is probably the closest to the actual sap green as it sits in the pan. But this has just been warmed up with a little bit of brown and a tiny bit of black. And those are the three colours that I'm going to use today. So I've got them ready, I've got them in my little ceramic palette, my new Christmas present. Um, I will link it below because it's on Amazon. And it's super useful because I used to work on plates and everything slides into each other and now they stay separate. It's perfect. <laughs> okay, so I'm just using a size 2 memory point brush from Coom and I'm just going to go straight in here with our pale wash. So with greenery um, I tend to work from the stem either inwards or outwards but I always know where my stem is going to fall because that's my root that's where I'm always heading back to and it'll keep the balance so I want to start off by painting something really soft and really kind of floaty and ethereal so I'm just gonna lightly paint the stem in first so I can see where I'm going And then I'm going straight in. I'm just kind of blotting the brush onto the paper. I want these leaves to be quite floppy and uh, a bit of variation in them. So I'm not worrying too much about how the brush is hitting the paper. I'm just making sure that the leaves don't look the same every time. So for this style as well, I want it to be um, quite loose, so I've been making sure that my leaves are 
coming out at different angles, they're hitting um, different sort of positions and things and also that they're not sprouting out from the stem at the same place, they're up and down. I'm just going to finish with a little swatch of the colour I've used, just to remind me how we got there. Perfect! So straight away with the first one you can see that we've already got a really lovely filler. This would be a great um, leaf to work over and work back into because it's quite pale, it will settle back into the background of your piece if you want it to. But it's also beautiful on its own, it's so delicate, it's got lovely like washy kind of vibes, so it's a great starting point. So what we're going to do now is almost the same thing again but with a darker green and we're just going to tweak the style of the leaves. So again, I'm just going to add my stem first. Okay, and as this colour is a little bit more dramatic, I'm going to make the leaves a bit more dramatic too. So I want them to be a little bit spikier and thinner. And to help give this piece a slightly more uniform feel, I am dragging the leaves out from the same points on either side this time. So it's going to feel a little bit more uniform and it's also going to feel a bit more dramatic because we've got these spiky elements and we've got our deep green. there's our second variation. So for the third variation I'm going to start to vary the value of the colour. So this will help to give real depth to a watercolour piece. So all I mean by that is we're going to pick up some of the paint that we've mixed and use it as is and then we're also going to weaken the value of that colour by adding some water to it and it will just give it a little bit of translucency and it will mean that you can start to overlap things and things will start to layer up and that creates like beautiful depth that will really like help your watercolour to shine. So 
I'm going to start off with my eucalyptus here, the paler green that I mixed. And I'm going to paint a couple of leaves just with this. Then I'm going to bring in a little bit of the darker green and I'm just going to weaken it down with some water. And you can see here like the gradient that we're starting to develop on that leaf. So I'm just building colour as I go, interchanging between the two colours and then the different values of them, which is just more or less water. And we're getting this really nice kind of varied colour scheme going on, it's really beautiful. So you can see here as we're overlapping, the paint is still wet so it's bleeding through. Um, it's a lovely technique actually and perfectly fine as it is. If you wanted more definition then you would just be better to let the paint dry a little bit in between each of these layers. So planning out where you want things to overlap and then painting in the paler leaf leaving it for a few minutes and coming back with that darker leaf so that it will look really crisp like this. Personally though, I'm quite happy with them bleeding today.
Okay, and so for the last one, I'm gonna jump in with my third green. And all we're doing for this one is we're changing the angle. So thus far, all of our greenery has been front on, coming out. And what I'm gonna do for this is I'm gonna look at a fern that's curled up and it's also from a side angle. So just doing little things like that, little tweaks within all of the greenery that you're using will again help to create depth. Um, it will just give more interest, like you can fill out with lots of different variations of a similar thing, but if you tweak that angle, tweak where you're looking at it from, they will suddenly all look really different. Okay, so I've made life really hard for myself here because I'm lefty and I should have gone the other way. That's okay. So I'm just gonna turn my paper upside down for the last one. It actually works quite well because this is curled into a ball. So I'm gonna be following the shape of the stem. And again, I'm gonna play a little bit with the value and weaken some of these leaves. Not too much though, because I want, I want this to look quite dramatic. And that's it. So we have our four different styles of greenery, four different ways to expand your greenery into different depths, 
different variations and this is just the tip of the iceberg. You can imagine how many different variations you could come up with just from looking at different plants, different colourways, different ways of layering. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a like, subscribe for me below and there'll be more content every week. I will also link in the products that I've used today. Happy painting!